Hi everyone, welcome back. There are two things I love so much in this world and they are the office and chicken pot pie. And today I am sharing with you my classic homemade chicken pot pie. First, you'll start out by making a roux and I have butter and onion sauteing and then I add flour and I will leave the measurements in the description below. So you'll make a simple roux and butter onion flour smells so good. I love it and you'll mix all together. You could also use Kodiak cakes instead of flour if you wanted to but this meal is going to be very hearty so you might as well just use flour. I always add garlic powder, onion powder, and salt and pepper to everything. Those are my go-to seasonings. So you'll see me keep adding them because I think they're delicious and they just add so much flavor to anything you make. So you'll mix this all together and I'm actually making three pot pies in this video but I'll leave the measurements for one pot pie. I'm making one for us for dinner, one to give away, and one to freeze for later. Then you'll add milk and you'll add about one half cup of milk and you'll mix it all together. And then I added some cornstarch. I like my pot pie to be really thick inside. If you do as well, go ahead and add some cornstarch. I didn't do it properly and make a slurry first, but it's still thickened up. Also, when the pot pie comes out of the oven, you want it to sit and I'm too impatient. So that helps too. And then my handy dandy camera helper and stir took over, which is Robert. Look at him multitasking. He is the best. And then you can add one and three fourths cup of chicken broth, or I just like to add chicken bouillon, and then I use more milk. You could use more water. Just play it by ear. It adds a really nice chickeny flavor and I should mention I do have chicken already cooked I cooked mine in the crock pot you could use a rotisserie chicken you could leave out the chicken if you wanted to or you could hurry and cook up some chicken so once it's nice and thick you'll be able to see and you want it to be really thick because you'll know that it will set up and look I'm adding more seasoning my classic go-to's also, my mouth is watering watching this video again. So once it's nice and thick, I add my chicken. And once again, I'm making three pot pies. So I added a lot of chicken, but you will only need like two and a half cups. You could also use turkey. So it could be like an after Thanksgiving meal too. And I just shredded mine. I've had it cut up, diced, and that works too. But the shredded chicken worked out really well. Once your chicken is added, you'll mix it all together.
and then it's time to add vegetables. I choose to add frozen vegetables and I do a mixture of peas and carrots. I also think a little celery would be good in it, but I choose frozen vegetables because it's easy and it's delicious and the vegetables blend really well so nothing stands out too much. And I'm adding so much. It's a huge pot and it's so delicious. It's all about that butter, baby. That was Robert. Really, there is a lot of butter in this, but that's what makes it so good. Correction. Everyone, I am making four pot pies. I'm giving two away. We're eating one and I'm freezing one. So now it's almost time to fill your pie crust. You just wanna make sure everything's mixed really well. So I like to prep. Oh, who's sneaking a bite? Bob? I would too. You know, Emerald Lagasse always says, if this were smell o vision, and right now I wish it were smell o vision and taste o vision, to be honest. So I'm filling the pie crust. Now let's talk pie crust for a second. I prefer to use pre store bought pie crust, it's easy. I think it tastes good. I also like pie crust on the bottom of my pot pie and the top. You could just use the top if you want or the bottom. You do you. And then my store-bought pie crust, I have tried a few and I prefer Pillsbury. The cheapest place to buy them is Costco if you're going to make a bunch or just your local grocer. And so I prefer Pillsbury. I've tried the Trader Joe's pie crust. It has cleaner ingredients, but I didn't like it. It ended up being really sweet and it just, it wasn't as good. So you can also do a homemade pie crust. Let's talk freezer mills for a second. I always recommend doubling this recipe because you will eat one for dinner and you will want leftovers and then you will want one for your freezer and the day you pull out a pot pie for a freezer mill and you eat it it's so magical so i've even made three just for my little family so that i could have one for dinner one the next day and one in like two months so you'll make it the same and you'll top it with your pie crust and then you will poke a few holes in it and then you cover it in tin foil and you cover that in saran wrap. It's really easy to do. And then you'll just pull it out the night before you want to eat it into your fridge and then you bake it with the tin foil on and then you'll want to take the tin foil off for about 20 minutes. So Robert and I have always dreamt of opening a cafe and I think we would work really well together because I will just hurry and cook something or bake something and he really pays attention to detail. And so he is the one who is doing the pie crust because he will top it and he'll make it look really presentable and nice. Like he cuts down the sides and I would probably just leave all of the crust on it and squish it somehow and then the sides would be a little burnt but still delicious. You'll want to make sure to put a little slit in the top. I do three little cute ones and then you'll bake it in your oven at 425 for 30 to 40 minutes and you'll want to make sure that the last 15 to 20 minutes of baking you cover the edges so that they don't burn and then let it stand five minutes before serving. And we just served ours with some vegetables on the side. Let me know if you end up making this recipe. It would mean so much to me. And thank you once again for watching. See you next time.